Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and on today's vlog, I will be discussing how I was able to identify people from an old film. <music> Photos are an amazing view into the past and something that people really treasure and especially genealogists. When you're doing family history research and you find a photograph of your ancestor or relatives, it can really be an emotional experience. And especially when you're able to find multiple photographs showing somebody throughout their life. There are even professional genealogists who specialize in analyzing photographs, not only helping people identify who is in the photo, but helping squeeze out all sorts of information you may not have been able to know otherwise. But something even better than finding photos are finding videos. I've been lucky in my own experience having relatives send me all sorts of videos from Super 8 films shot by my grandfather to videos of my cousin interviewing my great grandmother as well as his mother and a lot of other relatives. Film can be really intriguing even when it's not about your own family, especially when you're looking at film that's back to the early 1900s. It's really intriguing to see how life was not that long ago, but it was so different. So when I found this video that was uploaded to YouTube by Guy Jones, it was a 1911 video shot by a Swedish team depicting just everyday life, and they were shooting in New York City, and there were all these different scenes, and it was just really intriguing. And as I watched it, there were just all sorts of thoughts going through my head. Were any of the people in this video relatives of mine, or even ancestors of mine? What happened to all of these people, and did they even realize that they were going to end up being immortalized in this video, and people over a hundred years later were going to be watching them as they were just going about their lives? And as I'm watching this video, all of a sudden it cuts to this scene on the streets of New York, and it seems that the video is now set up on the back of either a car or a wagon of some sort, and it's shooting the traffic behind it. And clear as day, you can see this very well-to-do family in a car with a chauffeur, and you can see their license plate. And I was just thinking, could we actually name these people? If we have the license plate, there couldn't have been that many cars in 1911, and there has to have been some sort of registration for cars if they're having license plates. So could we actually find these people? And so I began to search. The first thing to do was to learn about licenses being issued in New York in 1911 or earlier. I'd found statistics from the Federal Highway Administration that showed that in 1911, there were 81,370 automobiles registered in New York. So in looking at more information, I found that license plate registration was actually published publicly in different newspapers and magazines. And from that information, I was able to find this page, Automobile Owners of Brooklyn and Long Island in the Brooklyn Life Magazine from July 1st, 1911. And this shows that license plate 65465 was a new car registered on June 12th, 1911. It was an EMF registered to Mrs. F. Lockwitz of 548 A Street. So this is a whole lot of information to go off of. We've got a name, we've got an address, we even have the type of car that they had. So from there I looked in the EMF and they were an automobile manufacturer who had manufactured cars in the early 1900s. And in looking at all the different models that they had, I found one that seemed to match up perfectly. And that was the 1911 EMF Model 30 touring car. Now this made sense being that the license plate registration said that this was a new car so bought in 1911 it was the 1911 model and just looking at a picture side by side it looks exactly the same. You have all of these different little features that are matching up perfectly. So the car is matching up so from here let's try to find out who's Mrs. F. Lockwitz at 548 
8th Street. So the first place that I really want to look is the 1910 census, being that it's only a year earlier than this registration in the video. So we have a high likelihood that the Lockwitz family is still living at 548 8th Street in 1910. And a quick search quickly turns up the Lockowitz family living at 548 8th Street. Now the household consisted of six people. That included Florian Lockowitz, who was the head of the household, his wife, who's listed as in Tony Lockwitz, three of their children, and then a servant, Mary Moriarty. Looking at the information from the 1910 census and then looking at the people who were in the car from the 1911 video, it looks like we can match everyone up pretty easily. Sitting in the front passenger seat is Florian Lockowitz, and sitting in his lap is either his daughter Elsie or Emily. And I think the girl in his lap looks a little bit older than the one in the back seat. So I'm guessing this is Emily in the front seat with Florian. Then in the back, we have Antoinette, and she is holding the children Francis and likely Elsie or though possibly Emily. And then sitting next to her is possibly the servant Mary Moriarty. Now for Mary, the census shows her as 25 in 1910, so she would have been about 26 when the video was taken. And I really don't think she looks 26, but it's really hard to tell, so it is possible that it's her. Although it could be another servant, it could be a different relative, but without any photographs of what Mary actually looked like, it's really hard to tell. Now, unfortunately, there didn't seem to be any information that would show us who the chauffeur was. And I was really hoping to figure that out because he really seems to be enjoying being on video and you can really kind of get an idea that this guy had a really jovial personality. But in everything that I looked at in the Lockwitz family, there wasn't anything that talked about a chauffeur or any sort of servants or butlers who were African American. But now that we had the names of the family, I really wanted to learn a lot more about them. Florian was born in Poussin, Poland in 1871 and immigrated to the United States at the age of 19 in 1890. His wife, Antoinette, who was born Antoinette Lockowitz, was a cousin of Florian's, although I haven't been able to figure out exactly how they were related. Antoinette was actually born in New York, and her father, Constantine Lockowitz, had immigrated to the U.S. in 1864. Being that Antoinette's father, Constantine, had come over in 1864, it's very possible that he had actually come to the U.S. because he was escaping the aftermath from the January Uprisings. The January Uprising was a Polish insurrection against the Russians, which had started in January of 1863. It lasted over a year and ended right around the spring of 1864. As the uprising was being squashed in 1864, a lot of the resistance fighters who were fighting against Russia started to flee, and many of them went to the United States. But by the time Florian arrived in New York in 1890, Constantine was already fairly well set up and was working as a cobbler and had many children, including his daughter Antoinette. It's not known when Florian and Antoinette met, but based on the documentation, they were likely married by 1895. Florian worked as a barber and built up a really big reputation because one of his patrons was J.P. Morgan. Florian began to open up a lot of shops and was even able to open up a shop in the Woolsworth Building in New York City. Not only was Florian a well-to-do businessman, but he also was in a lot of different social societies and was in a lot of different committees for the public as well. In fact, just days before his death, in 1918, he was elected to the Streets Committee for the South Brooklyn Board of Trade. When Florian died in 1918, there were about a dozen different newspapers that ran an obituary about him. When Florian died, he and Antoinette had five children. One child had been born in 1911, just months after the video was taken. So in that video, Antoinette is actually pregnant. And then they had another child in 1918, just before Florian died. After Florian died, the family still stayed at 548 8th Street 
which is actually a really nice brownstone home that still exists today, the same building. And then looking at records of the building, it was just recently sold in 2017. I was also able to find some information from a relative who had posted about how his aunt Nettie, who is Antoinette, had kept the barbershop businesses running even after Florian died. And this relative said that while a lot of the shops were lost during the depression, they were still able to hang on to at least the one in the Woolsworth building. And Antoinette had run that until at least 1950s. Florian was definitely a very well-to-do man for his time. And just looking at that video of the family, you can tell that they really were well-to-do. But in looking at his will from 1918, we can actually see that when he died, just seven years after that video was taken, his estate was worth $70,000, which today roughly translates to about $1.2 million. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it the thumbs up. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It's completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Blogger. I'm the Genie Blogger. See you in my next video.